Hello everyone, welcome to the Book Nook 221. My name is Nadira and today we are going to be doing a review, but it's going to be a part of a theme. This was a last minute decision, but a decision that I'm glad I made. I personally do not celebrate Christmas, I celebrate Kwanzaa, and Kwanzaa is a holiday that still doesn't get enough recognition. Same with Black authors. With that being said, for the month of December, I am going to be reading more books by Black authors in the spirit of Kwanzaa. To kick things off, we are going to be doing a review on Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifuko. I hope I said that right. If I didn't, I apologize. If I'm not mistaken, this was one of the most anticipated new books of 2020, and I was so intrigued by the plot as well as the cover that it had to go on my to-be-read list, and here we are reviewing it a year later. In addition, like I said before, the book was written by a Black author and it had Black characters, so of course that resonated with me on another level. Before we get started, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Also, go ahead and hit that notification bell, that way you don't miss any of my reviews in the future. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Tara Sai has grown up in isolation with her mother, whom she calls the Lady. For years, the lady, unbeknown to Terasai, has been grooming her to be a part of the Crown Prince's 11 council members. The prospect of having a real, loving family is enticing to Terasai. However, the lady has other plan. Once Terasai is anointed as a council member, she is to kill the prince. As the years go by, Terasai struggles to resist her mother's command. Will she succeed or will she lead the all-too-trusting royal to his demise? I have to say, I love the creativeness of the story. I love how Ifuko used her Nigerian culture for inspiration and it really shows. In an interview, Ifuko mentions there's some Asian influence in the book as well, which I thought to be very cool. I will admit I got a case of quote unquote imagination overload. Let me explain. When I did my review on Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo, I mentioned that a lot of fantasy books have made up languages and it can be very hard to keep track of everything and it can become overwhelming, hence imagination overload. However, Ifuko does provide a glossary and a pronunciation guide in the back of the book, which I heavily appreciated. I like how the book starts off with a backstory first and then brings us to the present instead of bringing us to the present and then having a flashback. I also like how the author takes us on Terasai's journey from when she was 11 to when she was 16 instead of again, placing us in a time when she is already a teenager and then having flashbacks. I think the reason why I liked how the plot played out is because I interpreted the synopsis a bit differently. I don't want to give away too much, but I thought Terasai was aware of her mother's intentions and was willing to go along with her except when it came to murdering the prince. I also thought the competition to be a part of the council was a physical one, but it was more so a competition of wits and smarts, which I can appreciate. With all that being said, the book took me completely by surprise, but in a good way. The pacing of the book was good overall, but there were some parts I felt were rushed just to get us to the point of conflict. There was something going on between Terasai and another character, and then a few pages later, the trust between them is completely broken, and now Terasai must overcome another problem. This happened a few times where the plot would speed up for a little bit, but then slow down and resume a normal pace. There were also some grammatical and formatting errors, such as letters should have been capitalized, some shouldn't have been, some dialogue should have been on a different line, etc., etc. At first, it didn't phase me, but then it happened on more than one occasion, and to be honest, it was a bit frustrating. I just hope that the publisher or whomever is more mindful of the mistakes in the next book. Overall, there wasn't much I didn't like about the book. I liked the creativeness, the inclusivity of different cultures, and I could relate to this book in certain aspects. The second and I believe final book, Redemptor, came out in August, and I will for sure be reading it. In fact, Ray Bearer is now on my list of favorite reads of 2021. I will be making a video of my most favorite and least favorite reads of the year, so be on the lookout. Overall, I give this book a 5 out of 5. So that is my review on Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifuko. Comment down below and tell me what you thought of the book. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!